Miami's on, 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 on fire. We have to. I, I feel like every time that I do a Real Housewives of Miami recap, I have to start with that song. I do love the song. Did I love Adriana's performance? Adriana with an E? Not really. But we'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Guys, happy Friday. Don't forget, our tickets have gone on sale for Philly. Philly. <laughs> I'll be posting a link in the description of the episode or the video version. Go get your tickets if you live in Philly. If you weren't able to make it to our DC show on February 16th, that's coming up and you couldn't get tickets. I know DMV is not too far from Philly. And you will, if you're willing to drive, I appreciate it. Some of you have flown to come to the New York City show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Philly is officially on sale. City Winery. Again, I look forward to seeing all of you in the cities coming soon. More significant dates will be announced coming soon, including maybe Miami. All right, Miami, Miami. First of all, I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about this episode because Miami really is having a good season. It's solid. It's not crazy toxic. Yes, we have a Karen on the cast, but it's okay because I think we can un-Karen her. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Maybe not. I think what we're seeing is Lisa's true self coming out. And we said this last week during our recap that it, it makes sense how Lisa and Lenny were together. Okay, we'll unpack. We'll unpack. But a lot of you have been asking for Kiki's personal story. You've been asking for Kiki. Since we were introduced to Kiki and she was just a guest. She wasn't even officially a part of the cast. She was just a guest. You're like, I want to know about the tall black girl, <laughs> the tall black woman. I want to know more about her. And look, since then, she's evolved. She's become more interesting, more funny. We've gotten to see a little bit more of her. And now this season, we're finally getting to see more of her story. I didn't know Kiki had two kids. I thought Kiki had one. So I'm thinking next season, because you know Miami breaks all the barriers when it comes to how they film and who is what and you know how friend doves don't normally get as much camera time or you see their personal story or they host events i'm hoping next season we will get to get get to know more about kiki we don't have to bring the kids on the situation because i don't like to have kids on here if the parents aren't willing to do that it's fine the fact that we know that she has these two kids that's great but i do want to get to know more of her story who who are the who who is the father like is she currently in a relationship? Well, we know she's not because she talked about, you know, hooking up with the gay boys. So um, is she currently in a relationship? We shall see. I'd like to see Kiki dating, like really dating, not like Larsa dating, you know, just for the show. Just saying. <laughs> Guys, let's get into our recap of The Real Housewives of Miami. Season 6, episode 15. The season's wrapping up, but we have to look at the reunion looks too. Don't you listen to me? I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer. Just got some hip in my feet. Now throw your hands up. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got the fuse. You make a fire. I'll add the fuel. Follow my lead. Just watch the shoes. Gotta turn the heat up to get this cool. Welcome back to the Kempire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. And don't forget, you can take our live recaps and special episodes like the one that we did on Monique's recent interview on Club Shay Shay on our podcast, Kempire. Be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Help us get to 500 reviews on both. All right, so Real Housewives of Miami is having one of their best seasons, I have to say, because 
everyone is bringing it. Julia is working overtime this season. It really makes me believe that a producer has been in her ear. Julia, you gotta bring it this season. And not only is she bringing it, she is bringing the trouble and instigating. And still keeping her hands clean somehow. Still keeping her hands clean. However, I do think that it was a producer throwing her under the bus, bringing her to this island of the dolls. Literally, she's telling us this story, and then we're at this place that is very triggering. And I'm just like, what are we doing? But of course, Marisol has to use the restroom because she always has to use the restroom. That's like me too, Marisol. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. I always have to use the restroom. Uh, maybe it's all this water I'm drinking. Uh, what are you drinking, Marisol? Mm -mm. <laughs> Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Um, so they go to the island. Adriana goes. Lisa and Larsa go. Remember, last week, Larsa and Lisa got into it. So I was actually surprised to see them even engaging with each other. So they go to the island. So, of course, Adriana's walking around the island. She's talking to someone on the island. Apparently, people come to this island to do witchcraft. She says, one of the dolls um, salivates. And she says, oh, that, that doll looks like one of my friends. And then, of course, the editors put Marisol's face over it. Because you remember a few episodes ago, they were accusing Marisol of doing, you know, all kinds of stuff with Adriana. Anyways, uh, we're going to leave that alone. So, um... Uh, Julia's having a bad reaction. Th this was the gondola ride from hell, <laughs> okay? Because everyone on, this, on the yacht, and it might be because it's hot, it might be because everyone's dehydrated, but both Alexia and Julia and um, Gertie are having the, like, this really emotional reaction. They're crying. They're like, we just got to get out of here. Marisol and them are on the island. They, they come back to the yacht and they say, like, what's going on? Why, what's, why is everyone reacting like this? Adriana's still on the island. And they're like, Adriana, we, we're trying to go. We're trying to go. So they're on this gondola ride. And then um, Gertie is feeling ill. She starts feeling nauseous. And look, I, I think people forget that Gertie literally just has gone through some surgery. And based on people I know that have gone through similar surgeries, it takes months to actually, like the soreness and everything like that to go away. So the fact that she's even filming and doing this show while feeling sick and she's dehydrated, I think she was more so dehydrated than anything else. And then also probably just drained from working, filming, and being with these women that are just so big personalities. I know we know them as big personalities on the show. And I know a lot of you think, oh, a lot of them are putting on. Oh, no, 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 no. If you've been to BravoCon, then you know that there's a reason why these women have been selected to be Real Housewives. You have to be on a level of, um, what's the word? Eccentric? I'm being nice and kind. You, there, There is a level of you have to be a certain something in order to be... To be this. That's why I say BravoCon for them. I don't hang out with them like that. For them, I can only imagine that level of energy in, in the room. And only to make things worse. <laughs> so Gertie's feeling sick. They get a whole like garbage can for her to throw up in. The mariachi band on another boat comes over to, to serenade them. And the way that this is filmed, you also probably are feeling like, oh, get me out of here. <laughs> look, look, get me out of here ASAP. So eventually they make their, their, way, their way back. And Gertie really needs like medical attention. She's clearly dehydrated. Luckily, we have a doctor on this cast. And luckily, also, I mean, the, the ambulance drivers spoke English. But it's, it's always better to have someone that, because first of all, Gertie didn't seem like she could really communicate. So it was nice to have a doctor and someone that spoke the language be able to communicate with the EMTs, all right? Sidebar, Lisa, you are just so self-centered. She's like, did anyone see my lip gloss? Did anyone see my lip? Well, mind you, her friend over there, we don't know what's going on with her. You know what the producers are doing, because they know we're going to comment on it. She's so looking for a lip gloss, and your friend is sick over here. <laughs> I can't with Lisa, man. She's like, anyone see my lip gloss? Your friend's over there, ill. But all right. So um, Gertie ends up going to the hospital. She's getting hydrated. Uh, based off what Dr. Nicole says, it looks like it is, it is dehydration. I didn't realize Mexico was high altitude. So it might be a little bit of the altitude sickness as well. All of that might be it. Again, they're out in the heat. They're not drinking enough water. There's a whole combination of different reasons. So in the ambulance ride, 
Dr. Nicole FaceTimes with Russell to let Russell know what's going on. She sees Russell's face and she seems instantly better. We have to remember these two have been with each other since high school. Like th there is not just a marriage here. There is a family here. They've been with each other for such a long time. I'm sure all it takes is a look and they understand each other. I love that. I love that. And I don't want, look, I put, I put a prayer over their relationship because reality TV is not for the, the faint of heart, especially when it comes to your relationships, friendships or otherwise. All right. Anyway, so it was nice that Dr. Nicole was, be able, was able to be there for her and at least communicate with Russell with what's going on, because we have to keep in mind, too. Gertie should not be getting sick, especially as she's preparing for this next chapter in her cancer journey. And she's already, we don't know. Is it related to dehydration or is it related to something else that's going on with her? So it is a little scary. All right. So we are off the gondola ride from hell. Ooh. <laughs> the way it was filmed, it really did feel like it was hell. And the way they kept on showing the, 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 the dolls and things like that, the upside down dolls. I was like, yeah, yeah, get me out of here. Look, get me out of here. All right. And then when he told Adriana that, you know, people come there to do witchcraft, get me out of here. Get me out of here, please, ASAP. Speaking of Adriana, so Adriana's getting ready for her Mexico City Pride. And um, she says to her makeup artist, like, this is Beyonce level, Rihanna level. I mean, it is. It, it really is a large crowd. Mind you, it actually might be bigger because Beyonce's um, concerts were like 70,000 people. This was 200,000 people. Again, it's a pride. And I'm sure Beyonce has performed in front of larger, you know, pride um, performances and things like that. But I get what she's saying. We'll get to her performance because I do have some words and thoughts. <laughs> Julia calls Martina and she's like, I've been kissing everybody. Martina's truly not bothered by Julia and her kissing everybody. But I did not know this old wide lesbian tale about, you know, turning lesbians that you get a toaster. Maybe I have not known enough lesbians in my lifestyle, uh, my lifetime that I did not know about that like old, you know, joke. But you learn something new. You learn something new. So Alexia says that she had a FaceTime and they flash back a FaceTime with Kiki and Kiki talks about how she was triggered by Lisa and what Lisa was saying during the gondola ride. Alexia says, well, you know, I see I see your side. I see her side. I think both of you are wrong. <laughs> Look, I don't know about how both of them are wrong. OK, maybe, maybe not. Maybe should Kiki have thrown a juice box? Probably not. But I get why Kiki was so annoyed with Lisa. All right. I think everyone did, including Lisa's own best friend, Larsa. And literally, Larsa's defending Kiki in this uh, next episode, this week's episode, which I appreciated. All right. So they all gather in the lobby because Adriana has already went to, to the Pride to, to get ready for the performance. So Julia comes down. Everyone looks great. I loved Kiki's look. Kiki's look was really cute. Those jeans that she was wearing with the cutouts in them and then the crop top. Um, I didn't really love Gertie's look. It wasn't bad. I didn't. It wasn't my favorite look. Um, I did like Lisa's dress, you know, the rainbow inspired. I liked Julia's eye makeup and, and her outfit was very like pride inspired. Some of them were just sort of like dressed to go somewhere. They weren't really pride inspired dress dresses or outfits. Um, so <laughs> Julia... Julia does not know how to spell her best friend's name, Adriana. Am I surprised? Not really. <laughs> I mean, there's language things going on. I think she probably has, like, are, are you really thinking about how, how you spell your friend's name until you have to maybe write a, like a Christmas card? How many people are writing Christmas cards or birthday cards? You know what I mean? So I get why she might not know how to spell her best friend's name. But <laughs> I don't know. So she doesn't know. So this sign has an incorrect spelling on her name. All right. So we go. They, the ladies head on over to the Pride festivity. She finds out. Adriana finds out that it's not 100,000 people. It's 200,000 people that attend this Mexico, Mexico City Pride. So her performance. She looked great. <laughs> See, look. 
Adriana, I think what Adriana should have done, and if she really is serious about being an artist, and I don't think that she is, I think she likes, you know, I'm on a, a reality show, I can have a hit song. She wants that reality show fame from it. She doesn't want to really do the work in order to become a better artist. I, based on what I've seen, I can't say that for a fact, but what I think she should have done, because you you knew that this was going to come up. I don't think it was just like, oh, Emilio said, oh, you're going to Mexico City? You should perform in Mexico City Pride. And even so, you should have been in rehearsals way before this. The, the performance was giving very amateur. Very amateur. And I think if she had performed more, like at Little Prides or Little Performances or gay clubs, I think uh, she would have done better. I felt like it was just okay. But... I, and I really do question why why Emilio would want to work with Adriana. Although I do like the song, Adriana is not a vocalist. She was lip syncing, okay, um, which is fine because people do it all the time in the industry. However, it's not even about that because no matter how you feel about some of the, the performers, we were just talking about J-Lo during our Tuesday Takeover, she might not be the strongest or, or the best vocalist, but Mama puts in the work to be a great entertainer and performer. And... Even Adriana's dancers, and I was like, this is looking like a hot mess. Mind you, this is edited, so they could have made this look even better. Did they edit it to make it look awkward? I don't think so. I think they just pieced together the best that they could, this performance. It was just okay. It was just okay, but it was a cute little moment to have during their Mexico City trip. Fine. <laughs> I will just leave it at that. I'm not going to really critique it to the level of like, well, this was wrong. This was all. I mean, it was it was a mess. But, you know, look, she had her moment. She performed in front of 200,000 people. Fantastic. Not many people can say that they've done that. All right, moving on. <laughs> so the late here's the thing. Even on their way to this event, the, Kiki and Lisa interact. She didn't want to sit with Kiki because of what happened the, the night before. And when she, when they were getting off the sprinter, Kiki was like, you know, I love you. And she was like, I forgot her exact words, but throughout the episode, you see, even before they get to their conversation at the end, you see how many times Lisa kept on bringing up the throwing of the juice box or the fighting. Like they showed you multiple times, how many times she's brought it up. And Kiki's just, Kiki's just like, can we move on? You keep bringing this up. Like, she could literally keep bringing it up, too, but she hasn't. And Lisa keeps bringing it up, annoyingly. All right. So, um, Kiki says that um, Lisa needs to stop playing victim. She says that she didn't... Um, <laughs> she says this to the other ladies. She says, I didn't lay on my back and, and marry a plastic surgeon. I mean... No <laughs> lies were told. No lies were told. But as she's talking, as she's talking to, because um, they're back at the hotel, as she's talking to um, Larsa, Julia's listening. And you could tell that Kiki kind of gave attitude to Julia when Julia went outside to talk to the other ladies. I'm not sure what that was about. If you pay attention to the body language and, and Kiki's face. But as soon as Julia went out there, she's telling, telling Lisa that, oh, she thinks that you're an entitled, spoiled person. I mean, it's it's not far from the truth. Did she lie is the real question. All right. Um, sidebar, they do say that Marisol uh, wasn't feeling well and throwing up. They were thinking that it's altitude. And you guys love to say that I'm delusional and that I don't believe that that um, maybe uh, Marisol has um, a drinking issue. Well, as soon as I saw this, I was like, well, did she drink today? Is that why she's not feeling well? I'm asking a question. You guys will answer it in the live chat and in the replay crew. All right? Guys, don't forget, it is Valentine's Day in just a few days. But you still have time, especially if you live within the United States. But even if you don't, I think you still have some time if you live internationally. Get you some roses that will last up to a year. Our friends over at Rose Forever have partnered with us again this Valentine's Day season. Get you something. Get something for 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 the, your loved ones. It's a wonderful gift that will last, a, I would say, a lifetime. But, you know, a year is like a lifetime. Anyways, they have amazing, beautiful assortments on their website. But you also get a discount code with the discount code KEMPIRE40. That's $40 off of your order. Plus, you can use the discount code INFLUENCER for free worldwide shipping. 
head on over to the description of this video or audio. If you're listening to this, it will be available in the, the description notes. Okay. Shout out to our friends over at Rose Forever. Thank you for them for sponsoring today's live recap of the Real Housewives of Miami. So before we finish off the episode, I almost completely forgot that I wanted to talk about the Real Housewives of Miami season six reunion looks. So let me go and show you guys this. All right. Trying something new here, y'all. So this first look, this first look is um, Lisa. I saw pictures of this at first and I was just like, I never usually love Lisa's look, period. I usually never love her look. Let me just see if I can make this a little bit longer for us guys. Hold on one second as I do this. I'm doing this live. All right. I'm doing this. Let's go live. Let's go live. All right. Um, or not. Hold on, y'all. Let's let's see. Okay. I think I got it. Maybe or maybe not. It's fine. Um, so this is this is her her reunion look. I like the color. I like the color. I don't really. It's just it's kind of it's like it's plain. This is plain. All right. So that's Lisa's look. Let's take a look at Julia's look. Of course, this is inspired by their Mexico City trip. This is not a bad look for for Julia. I mean, it's you know what it's it's reminding me of Peggy Bundy. I don't mind it though. Like she's a model, she can carry off looks like this. But when I saw the group shot of them, I was just like, this just looks like a mess. It just looks like it's all over the place. But I feel like she can carry it off. It's it's she's taking a risk. She's definitely taking a risk. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Her hair and makeup looks great, but like it's giving Peggy Bundy avant garde. All right. Okay, look at the hair and makeup on Miss Kiki. I like this color on Kiki. And of course, she knows how to pose. Of course, Kiki knows how to pose. The color of the skin is gorgeous. The hair, the, the flowers in the hair. I love it. I love this. I mean, I don't necessarily love the middle portion of the dress. I think if that was gone, I think I would love this even more. Let me go back up. Let's go back up. I want to know what you how you guys would rate Lisa's look from 1 to 10. I'm going to give this a 5. I just don't think there's anything special about it. It might be also how I'm feeling about Lisa this season, but we'll get back to that in a second. Um, this, I probably would give a 6 out of 10 because I don't love it. it. She took some risks, but I don't love it. Kiki, I don't love that middle portion, but I do love the hair and makeup. The leg is legging. I think the color is beautiful on her. I'm going to give this an eight and a half. I think this is gorgeous. Again, if they didn't have this middle portion, I probably would give it a lot higher. But that pose is giving. You could tell she's a model. Okay. All right. Did I skip? No, I didn't. Hold on, y'all. All right. Alexia. I don't mind this look, y'all. It's giving very... I, I'm guessing the theme is Mexico. Um, I think it looks beautiful. It's nothing special. It's sexy. Hair and makeup looks like Alexia, the normal. Nothing really different or dramatic, even though this is supposed to be your Super Bowl. But I think this is solid. I think it's safe. I think it's solid. I think it's beautiful at the same time. I'm going to give this a seven and a half because I do think that it is safe, but it, it, it is also very beautiful too. And again, once, once we see it in motion, we might feel differently. One thing I will give Miss Gertie is that she always brings high fashion to the reunion last year it was that like mesh you know heavy metal um situation the previous year she looked like a damn superhero this is beautiful this dress is be the only criticism i would give this it's almost because it's like she's getting lost i don't know if she just it needed to be pulled in more because it's almost like she's getting lost in it i love that she's celebrating her no hair right now She's giving that as, as a moment. Hair, makeup look great. I The only criticism of this dress, I'm one, I, I don't know if it's intentional that it's so bulky on her. I just feel that it could probably be a little bit more snatched and a little bit more properly fitted to her body. But the color, the look, the pose, gorgeous. You would think that Gertie was a model, but this is, it was a risk. 
And if I had to rate it, for the for me, the fit is so important when it comes to these dresses. And again, this is a dress I'm going to want to see in motion to see how it is. I might love it when it's in motion. But right now, off the picture, I don't love it. But she took a risk. Because she took a risk, I'm going to give her an eight. Because I, I gave Alexia a seven, right? Or seven and a half. So I got to give this one an eight in comparison. Like, I'm, I'm grading them on a curve. <laughs> Lies! The lie! Okay. When I saw this, I was like, you know what? She's leaning into the theme. Um, it's a theme. It's a risk. I think she looks... I mean, the hair and makeup are questionable. The dress, again, it's a theme. The, the headdress, it's a theme. I got to keep saying it's a theme. It's not my favorite look. But it's a theme. <laughs> it's a theme. So uh, she tried. She tried. She tried. She tried. She tried. Damn. Um, I don't love it, though. I'm going to give it a six and a half, though, because it's a theme. And my girl Adriana with an E de definitely tried. See, here's the thing. <laughs> Larsa. No matter how we feel about Larsa, I feel as if Larsa's look is the is the Fenty version of the Timu version that we're getting here with Adriana. Like they they when I saw both both looks, I was like, well, you know what? I feel as if, and I'm sorry, podcast folks, for those that are hearing me describe these looks, please head on over to our YouTube channel so that you can actually see them if you haven't seen them already. But it feels like Adriana's look is like the Timu version of of Lars's look. And do I love Lars's look? Not really. I don't love it, but I have to say hair and makeup looks great. I like her little crown. I actually do like this look. It's giving exactly what she's been this season, the, the evil witch of the West. But I think she looks good. She's actually probably, because she's taking a risk, because it is a theme of Mexico, I actually get Mexico from her look and her outfit and her makeup. I actually like her lip. Dr. Nicole. Dr. Nicole, for me, I never really love Dr. Nicole's fashion or her reunion looks. They're never really my favorite, but it leans into who she is. And remember, she's also pregnant, so she's showing off her, her pregnant belly. She looks decent. Like, I'm not going to, it's not my favorite look. It's not anything special. I'm going, it, it was a safe choice. I'm going, and because she's pregnant, I'm going to give her a cur on the curve. I'm going to give it a seven. I'm going to give it a seven. There isn't anything special, but it's not terrible either. She didn't really take a risk. Marisol. Marisol has had some really great confessional looks this season. Her fashion sometimes can be hit or miss. This was, I think she was trying. It's not my favorite look. The bust of her, of her dress seems a little awkward. Um, hair and makeup, decent. I've seen it look better. Like her confessional this season, I forgot what it's what she's wearing but it's like almost red what she's wearing but for me that would have been a better reunion look than what she's giving here but to me this kind of reminds me of that look as well i kind of wish she went she would have went with like the red but you have to keep in mind when they do reunion looks they have to get approval from production and the network for whatever they're wearing so i'm wondering if they wouldn't allow her to wear red i guess that's it right that's all <laughs> we have such a big cast i can never remember who was your favorite? Who was your favorite from the Real Housewives of Miami reunion looks from 1 to 10? Be sure to hit me up on Twitter if you're listening to this or in the comment section of this video of our recap of the Real Housewives of Miami. Back to the episode. I'm glad I remember because I was like, damn, I would have forgotten to talk about the reunion looks. But yeah, let me know what you thought of the reunion looks. Who, who, were, who were your best dress and who was your worst dress? I don't know. Who was my best dress and who was my worst dress? I don't know. I wish I had the, the group shot to show you guys because the group shot says a lot. <laughs> the group shot is a mess. <laughs> like, seeing it all together with the ladies, it doesn't look great. Separately, they look better. But as a group, it's like, what the hell? Splattered on this reunion set. So back to this episode where Julia runs outside to tell, run and tell information. Because that's all Julia has been doing this season is running and telling information. All right? Okay, Julia, I get it. You're trying to secure your spot for whatever reason. I guess it's not enough that you're married to Martina. All right. Um, anyways, <clears throat> so 
Julia runs and tells her that. The group then, um, they go to this, this club and they're trying to have a good time. Julia decides to tell her more about how the group is feeling about Lisa's constant complaining. So they're trying to have a good time at the club after Pride and everything. And Julia is, is giving all this information to Lisa. And so Lisa gets upset and she's like, I, I want to go upstairs. I want to go upstairs. And Dr. McCoy says, you want me to go with you? She's like, no, I want to be my, by myself. But they end up all going upstairs and they end up having this discussion with, with Lisa. And Lisa feels like no one has her back. She's like, I'm going through a lot. Uh, Larsa defends Kiki in, in the situation with Lisa, which I appreciate. Like this episode, I have to say, I saw Larsa and Gertie getting along Larsa was was in the in the right in defending Kiki on the gondola ride, and then she defends Kiki here. All right, and she was like, "I, I didn't like how you know Lisa, you know, was standing up and being aggressive and, and things like that, and then was coming at you and, and saying what she was saying to to Kiki." So, um, where was I? Where, hold on. Oh, I'm like scrolling, and I'm like, "Where where am I in, my, in regards to my notes?" So Adriana chimes in in this conversation. She was like, you know, I, I, I even cried recently about my divorce. So I don't know why we're expecting Lisa to just sort of, you know, move on. I don't think anyone is expecting Lisa to move on. But Lisa, if you see, based off the show that we're watching, and I can imagine she's probably a lot worse in real life. She's constantly, constantly complaining and woe is me. Even to Jody. Can you imagine what Jody goes through in regards to this? And she's complaining to her friends. So for me, it's sort of like, we all, I think we all fell for Lisa. We were like, Lenny is trash. Lenny is trash. But I think we've turned a corner. And it's not saying that we want you to get over what you're going through. Obviously, you're going through stuff. And you're probably going to go through stuff for a while as you're trying to cope hand with this narcissist. But I also don't think that you're completely innocent. All right? So Adriana tries to defend her. All right? And... Kiki then talks about her rough upbringing and how she was triggered by some of the comments that people were saying on the gondola ride and specifically what Lisa said about the food. And then they flash back. Oh, God, when they flash back to that Lisa making that face talking about, oh, I just gave them chicken. This is probably the best food that they've ever had. I was just like, what in the Karen? And I want to preface this by saying this because when I talked about Lisa being a Karen, people immediately say, whoa, but her parents is this, this, this. You can be a Karen no matter what color you are. For me, Karen is not just about being a white woman complaining on, on someone. No, for me, a Karen behavior is a behavior. So you don't have to be um, white in order to be a Karen. But I believe Lisa, I don't, I've never done her DNA test, but she's at least white passing. Okay? So I'm just going to leave it at that. All right? And I'm sure she might prefer it that way just saying based off the behavior here anyways so i say all that to say kiki was talking about her rough upbringing they even show pictures of kiki in haiti and where she grew up um she says that no one in this group so she wasn't really just directing this at lisa she says no one in this group asked about her life um she mentioned that she has two kids i was like I thought you had one because, you know, they FaceTimed before with her and her daughter. So I thought she only had one kid. She says she has two kids. And she, and she says that, you know, no one asked her about her life and how she grew up. And knowing this group, no one does. No one really tries to. And it's probably because she's considered a friend of, you know, th there is always an underlying they're not talking about the show because they can't talk about the show. But there's an element of that. Oh, she's a friend of. She's a guest. She's not, you know, we're not engaging. We're not trying to get her personal story. But she's she's pointing out, like, you guys never asked me about me. She's been feeling. Remember the last couple of episodes? She, she had swim week. She threw an after party. She wanted the group to go. And everyone bailed on her. Probably bailed on her because she is a newbie. She's a friend of the show. They'll probably go to an Adriana or Marisol, because remember, they were original people on this show. So they don't, they're not really treated like friend doves. And I think for Kiki, she's feeling like a second-class citizen amongst these women. All right? Besides just even being a black woman. All right? So she talks about, uh, talks about that. And this leads to a conversation between her and, and Lisa. And Lisa's just like, I, I can't fix your childhood trauma. So that... 
makes Kiki very upset. And she says, maybe what's happening to you and Lenny is your karma. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. Look, normally I would say saying something like that is just something you don't say. However, I will say this, that I feel as if Kiki deserved every last one of it. Not Kiki, um, Lisa. She deserved what Kiki said to her in that moment. She really, because someone needed to say it. Because I think for Lisa, she's so used to people babying her. Everyone, even people in this group, baby her. We have Gertie going through cancer and everyone has been focused on Lisa and what Lisa's going through. We have Marisol like, oh, monkey. You should call a baby monkey. Oh, Bill, oh, poor monkey. No, no. People baby this woman. She lived like a sugar baby at home with Lenny. So people have continued to baby her. She's got this new man, Jody, paying half her rent. People continuously baby and coddle Lisa. It's time to grow up, Lisa. Hoxstein. It's time to grow up. So, and sometimes you just got to say say it. Maybe this is your karma. I hate to say that, but we said it last week. Well, it seems as if Lisa and Lenny are not that far apart when it comes to personalities. They're not that far apart. I mean, you really couldn't be. To be with, with that type of person for 15 plus years, come on. I know people probably were like, damn, Kiki, you shouldn't have said it. But I was thinking it. And for those that are in the live chat and those that are part of Replay Crew, I know that we probably wouldn't say it, but wasn't it needed to be said? <laughs> and I'm kind of glad that Kiki said it because as soon as Kiki said it, based off of the buildup, because you know we saw the preview and I was just like, oh, damn. But as we get built up in these last couple of episodes, I was like, yes, say it, Kiki. Maybe it's your karma. Maybe it's your karma. How dare you talk to me like this? Well, <laughs> look, well, I hate to see this because last season it was all about Marisol and Alexia and their behavior. This season it's real. And I kind of felt like it was going to go in this direction that, yes, we're all uplifting Lisa now. But if Lisa's still carrying on and woe is me in this next season. But it's not even just that. I think we probably could understand that's just her personality. She's going to be that way. She's never going to change. But it's the Karen behavior this last couple of episodes that have really just, at least for me, turned on on Lisa. I'm just like, okay, Lisa, I thought you were a little bit more grounded than this. I thought you were a little bit more sensitive than, th than this. And I'm not thinking that she's a terrible person. I mean, she was married to Lenny for 15 years. Questionable. Questionable. Guys, what did you think of their reunion looks? What did you think of this episode? We're about to round out the season of The Real Housewives of Miami. I still think that it was a solid season. We're not going to always love every housewife every single episode or every single season. I say all that I say now, and I'll say next season, oh, I don't like Kiki. I think Kiki went too far. Oh, I don't like Gertie. I think Gertie went too far. Oh, I don't like Dr. Nicole. Gertie, um, Dr. Nicole went too far. You just don't know. I take it season by season. As I always say, everybody can get it. Pow, 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 pow. Just saying. But this season, it's your season, Lisa, because you know I loved you in the first couple of seasons. Sorry, but not sorry. It's just truly how I feel in this moment. Guys, if you attended our New York City show, Kempire After Dark, if you're a member of the channel, I will be releasing some of the footage from our live show there exclusively to become a member. Head on over to teamkempire.com backslash join. And if you're in the D.C. area, I will see you guys February 16th for our Kempire After Dark tour stop. And, and today, available right now at City Winery in Philadelphia, we will be... Um, coming there March 7th. So tickets are now available. So go get your tickets if you haven't already. More information will be available in the description. Literally, that, that show date is less than like a month away. So stay tuned for that, Philadelphia. I look forward to meeting all of you. All right. And anything else? Oh, yeah. Rose Forever sponsoring today's live show. Don't forget, you can get yourself some roses with the discount code Kempire40 for $40 off. That's a huge, huge discount. Be sure to check out our description for more details on how you can get some Rose Forever for yourself. Happy Valentine's Day. Hope you guys have a fantastic Friday and a fantastic weekend. 
I will see you all later. Let's get out of here with some music. My Miami. Mm, I wish I could play that song, but I can't. <laughs> Look, but I can't. Bye, y'all. To what we've already given up It's like we're pacing around the obvious Separate lives, different stories To it for us are all fed up Well, you and I play with fire But don't say nothing Or we'll both bust it We'll get what's coming after you hey, hey. No, don't say nothing Or bon voyage to run Dead fools, trade fights for better